We're here at Mirabuka Driving Test Centre. I'm going to demonstrate one of the most common driving test routes around here. So the best way is to reverse park in one of the bays and uh, as you're leaving it's going to be a lot easier for you to get out and uh, you're not going to be stressing too much about how you're going to reverse. Now make sure you get here early to be able to catch one of these bays here because sometimes it can be packed. So we're going for a drive and I'll be showing you one of the most common routes here in Mirabuka. Make sure you indicate everywhere. So we've got a, a couple of speed bumps here. Just make sure you don't go too fast over them. Just make sure you do your observing correctly because there might be cars coming pretty fast. The distance behind the stopped vehicle must be adequate. You've got to be able to see the bottoms of the tires clearly of the car that's uh, in front of you. So, if you continue down this way, there's a school zone which goes pretty much for about a couple of kilometres. If it's between 7.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. during the school days, obviously, if it's a school holidays, it's not going to apply. Or in the afternoon, 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. So make sure if there's any road works as well, and if it states that, you know, the speed limit is less than 60, you've got to adhere to that uh, speed limit. So we're coming to traffic lights, which is uh, Flinders Street intersection. Be careful about the merging traffic. After the traffic lights, we will have to merge. So we indicate and mirror as the street gets more and more narrow if there's no line dividing the two lanes that are expiring you would then need to check your blind spot this is the area where you might be doing your uh, exercise left some behind okay any of these streets around you might be doing the exercise left some behind okay so if the assessor asks you to stop on the side of the road or park on the side of the road you've got to make sure that you park in the spot where it's not too close to the intersection so we've got a street a bit further up probably about 25 maybe 30 meters from here so i'm going to switch off my indicator if i'm parked on the hill i'm going to have to turn the steering towards the curb now this action is performed before the car fully stops because that way you're not going to be doing the uh, static turning the assessor is going to ask you to remember this spot here where you parked and then to drive off and at some point to come back to the same location. So once you've been given the instruction to leave, then you would check your rear view mirror. So just to establish if there's anyone in the process of overtaking you. If there is a vehicle about to pass, you don't indicate. So if it seems that there's nobody, we indicate right, check in the blind spot and off we go. Now you don't know when the assessor is going to ask you to come back. Make sure you're driving within the speed limit. So this is a 50 zone here. So if they say, for example, if they ask here, okay, I'd like you to go back to the house, you left some behind. So I'm gonna to have to find a suitable spot. So I'm gonna indicate right, and I'm gonna use one of these driveways. So this driveway is still far enough from that intersection up there. And uh, I'm going to drive maximum up to the letterbox line, but as long as your vehicle's inside of the driveway, you don't need to go any deeper because you can't cross the property line, which is a letterbox line. Reversing. So you don't need to indicate in this situation. I've got a car coming from behind, so I've got to wait for it. Now it's just gone. Okay, and I'm going to continue. Okay. So the next step from here is the same as before. We're checking if there's anyone passing us. If there's nobody, we indicate right, looking over our shoulder, and then off we go again. We've got a car parked this time, so I've got to do this again. So as much as it seems unnecessary, we've got to do this in the test. There was no driver in the car, clearly, but we still need to check if the car started to move. I'm referring to indicating left and checking the blind spot on the left after I passed the vehicle. So that's the house that we've stopped by. So I'm gonna use the next door driveway. I can use this one here. It's making sure that I've indicated in time. Up to the letterbox line maximum. No need to indicate. I've got a car coming from behind, so I'm gonna to have to wait. Okay, now it's gone. Turning, making sure I don't go too wide. Stopping when I'm parallel. 
from here, same procedure. So mirror, if there's no one passing, I can indicate, looking over my shoulder, off I go. And I need to indicate left again and stop in the same spot where I first started. So now I'm going to show you one of the commonly used car parks. So this is a 70 zone, so Wanderoo Road is 70 zone. So the next intersection we're turning left, which is Amelia Street in Balcatta. People report they struggle exiting that car park because it's really steep and there's a pedestrian crossing and a bus stop which can potentially block your view. You may need to use your handbrake regardless whether you drive an automatic or a manual car. Some automatic cars don't have a very powerful engine so for that reason you may need to use the handbrake in order not to roll backwards. So now we're going to be turning right into the shops here. You can cut into the painted median strip in order to get inside okay so this is very steep like I've mentioned before so I'm actually going to go straight ahead down here so we're going to reverse park in one of these bays they're not going to let you use the re uh, rear camera if you you know if you've got one in your car so you're best off checking everything and uh, frequently just making sure that nothing slips your right okay and then we straighten up once we've got in there. So the spot where the exit from this car park is can be a bit of a challenge for everyone coming here to do the driving test. So again just be mindful of the pedestrian crossing and don't cross any wide solid lines. Okay so this time I'm going to turn left but see it's very steep okay so extremely steep you might need to use your handbrake okay here i'm in the right lane because i didn't want to interfere with a car that was coming from behind that was lining up to the left so for that reason as i'm going straight ahead here i'm going to have to merge left so whoever's got their nose in front they have priority so that person's going a bit faster than me i'm indicating left checking my mirror as the line runs out I check my blind spot on the left. Do not deviate, just continue straight because the street will get more and more narrow. A lot of times we have people who feel that they've done well up until a certain point in the test, get ahead of themselves a little bit and start to celebrate a little bit too early. And as a result, they potentially do like 70 kilometers in the 60 zone. So, you know, just make sure until you're back in the licensing center, parked, turn the engine off, that's when you can do your analysis. Do, do not do any analysis before you finish your driving assessment. So if there's two lanes, we always line up in the left lane if we're coming from one single lane. Now we're turning left. You've got to wait for that car because it's turning into the driveway. So clearly here, I've got to give way to people from the right hand side, but also from opposite direction. I can clearly go, but I can go straight across to the far right lane because it was only one single turning lane. We're back in the licensing centre. Always double check what's happening. And they're going to usually ask you to park forward. Just make sure you do that correctly as well. When you're parking next to a car, it's good to sort of pay attention if there's anyone inside of that vehicle to see if there's any sort of any motion in there. And uh, once you become more experienced, all of these things will be your second nature. So thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.